The psalmist begins by writing in Psalm 123 a very often repeated phrase in the Psalms. And he says, To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. And the image there is, is that God is, God is above. God is, um, God is enthroned. God is all-powerful. God is God, very God. And the psalmist, as he's going up to Jerusalem, he's lifting his eyes up to the Lord. And the situation is that he is in a, he's in a place and a state that, that only God can, can answer or only God can deliver. I, I don't know where everybody is today in their lives. I know some of your situations, uh, Barbara, I know you're probably watching this morning and um, that cancer uh, is a continued repeated uh, thing that rears its ugly head. Um, Brian, as he has hope for a job, his interview went well, by the way, uh, he recognizes too that he's in a place that only God can move and God can answer. <clears throat> and I think about those circumstances in our lives Sometimes they just come as a result of us living in a world that is wrought by sin and sin has its consequences and sin has its effects on not only the individual that may uh, be sinning, but it, it has its consequences on those around them as well. And in those situations, we recognize that, that only God can move and only God can answer. And sometimes God puts us in those situations to call us to be dependent on him, to cause us to trust him, um, to cause us to call on him. You remember the Bible says that uh, we glorify God when we call upon him. Well, the particular situation that this psalmist was in when he wrote the psalm was that uh, there were those who around him, whether more fluent or not, pious, uh, were continually badgering them, criticizing, coming down on them, misunderstanding them, etc. And so let's jump to the last verse where he says, um, Our soul has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. Here he says, I can't take any more. My soul has had enough of it, of those who, 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 who are scorning us while they're at ease. Perhaps there were those in more affluent situations or not going through any problems or seem to have no problems, and they, they're scorning them. They're coming down on them, and I've, I've had enough from those who are at ease. Don't they see the situation? that I'm in, or the contempt of the proud, the arrogant, the ones who think they have it all together, the ones who uh, perhaps spiritually uh, think that, that, they've, that they've got a block on it, that they know the right way. And he says, man, my soul has had enough of it, God. And prior to that, he says, God, to you I lift up my eyes. I look up to the heavens to lift up my eyes. And then he describes the way that he's lifting up his eyes like a servant who looks to the hand of his master. There it's a very, very vivid picture of all the provision that a servant has comes from the hand of his master. And the psalmist is saying, God, I look up to you because like the master who provides for his servant, God, I know my provision only comes from you. Almost as if, God, if you don't provide in this situation, and think of it beyond material means, everything that the servant got, everything that the servant was given in life and the totality of it came from his master. And so it is. We have to recognize that Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, and we are so dependent on Him. We're dependent on God for our, our material provision. We're dependent on God, the Holy Spirit, for our emotional health. We're dependent on God by the Holy Spirit for our spiritual health. We cannot will ourselves into a good spiritual standing with God. 
It's by the Holy Spirit. And everything, life, breath, everything that we are is dependent on God. And then he says, like a maidservant looks to her mistress, the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy on us. Again, this word mercy, man, it's such a, such a vivid picture that, that he's calling on God to have pity, to have mercy on them in their situation. God, have compassion on me. Have mercy. Look down and see my situation. And God, please have mercy on me. I find that when I've been in those times of prayer of needing to call on God for his compassion and his mercy, he doesn't always answer in the time that I think he should. Can, can I get an amen to that? And it's in that time where I'm calling out for God's mercy. I'm calling out for him to have compassion in my situation. That he is a father who is faithful and he loves me. And he knows just how long it's going to take for me to learn and to gain what I need to learn in that situation. But he does have mercy. And he does extend his mercy in his time. So if you're waiting on God this morning and you're crying out for him to have mercy, um, <clears throat> please, please, please know that he is a God that is merciful and he's full of mercy. And he will extend his mercy in his time and in his season and have hope in that. And then again, he says in verse 3, have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. He, he repeats the phrase, it's like us, oh God, oh God. And sometimes we may not say the word mercy, but all we can pray is, oh God, oh God, have mercy, have mercy on us. For we have had more than enough of these folks' contempt. Um, I don't know, again, what your situation might be. And maybe you're overwhelmed in it, that, that, um, that you've had enough. Your soul is, is weary. You just need it to uh, have some relief. Sing this song with me. I lift my eyes up. Yeah. 
is always faithful. up to him wait for him he will have mercy he'll see with compassion in his time and remember he has always been faithful and he will always remain faithful um, Lisa my cousin I see you're on I want to congratulate you for earning your degree at a later point in life and I'm not going to say how much later but uh, congratulations. 
I love y'all. Y'all have a great day. I pray the Lord's blessings that he'll keep you. I look forward to being with you, seeing you tomorrow morning.